Hi everyone, I'm Navita and I'm a developer advocate at Reality Labs who works on products and features for our developers who are helping us shape the future of VR. In this series of videos, we'll go over Quest multiplayer features by exploring the shared spaces sample made in Unity. This is the last episode of a four-part video series. In our previous videos, we went over some of the multiplayer features that the platform SDK has to offer. In today's video, we'll go over some more multiplayer features that the SDK offers, learn about travel reliability, best practices when building your multiplayer VR apps, and takeaways and resources that you can use when designing your own VR multiplayer applications. So without further ado, let's dive in. Apart from the features we mentioned in the previous episodes of this video series, multiplayer features also provide additional functionality to make it easy to enter into multiplayer experiences and to also help with handling edge cases. For example, the SDK provides an API for invocable error dialog to show the users what went wrong as they were trying to join. It also provides an option to rejoin through the rejoin dialog in case the user lost connection or crashed, allowing them to decide whether they'd like to be put back into a session with friends after any disruption. Another useful feature that Multiplayer provides is webhooks that allow you to receive real-time HTTP notifications of changes that may be relevant to the Multiplayer experiences in your app. For example, you could be sent a notification when any of your app's users join a new lobby or session without you having to query for any changes. The SDK also provides options for quick invites, which allow you to integrate invites into the app experience without needing to show an overlay. Another feature that makes it very easy for your users to join destinations is Group Launch. Group Launch allows you to create links directly to best experiences of your app and share it to your community on any platform. You can use these links to promote a new map, set up a Play with Developers event, or give out limited rewards. These group launches can be private or public. For more information on how to use these methods and to learn about example scenarios where group launch can be used, check out the documentation. In our recent Oculus Developer Hub update, we included new capabilities and improvements to existing features that will improve your daily development workflow. One of these is multiplayer testing, which allows you to test group launch directly from ODH on multiple devices. Multiplayer testing works for any app that has group destinations registered and at least one binary uploaded to a release channel. Launch your app on one or more devices with a specific destination and lobby session ID. To learn more about multiplayer testing, check out the documentation. Now that we've gone over these useful platform SDK multiplayer features, let's look at travel reliability, what it is, and how we can design our apps better to improve reliability. Travel reliability means that our players successfully reach their intended destinations reliably and correctly. It is crucial to make sure that travel reliability is high so as to not break the immersion for the player and prevent any unwanted surprises. Only show valid destinations that the user can travel to. If a destination isn't available to everyone, you should show an error message to the individuals who cannot go to that destination if they attempt to travel there. Identifying where in the process the travel fails can help in error handling and letting the player know what happened. Making sure that our players travel reliably to their intended destination is very important when designing multiplayer VR apps to ensure a smooth, fair and comfortable experience. When a user is traveling, developers should strive to minimize the user input required for the user to complete this travel. Now, let's go over some common scenarios where simple changes in design decisions can potentially help improve travel reliability and make your user's travel experience more enjoyable. When a user hasn't completed a tutorial and is required to complete the tutorial before they can travel. In such cases, 
it is recommended that the developer allows them to skip the tutorial and go directly to the destination. When a user is required to go through the setup for a game's avatar before they can travel, but they haven't completed it yet. The best way to avoid such situations is to give them a default avatar so that they can continue with the experience. When a user is required to go through a login screen that needs them to fill in their credentials, such as an email or password, if possible, having them continue without seeing the login screen would make this experience a lot more reliable. When a user doesn't have access to the destination for game reasons, such as they don't have high enough level, not enough cash, or haven't unlocked the destination yet, and is instead taken to the main menu without any messaging. The best way to handle such situations is to inform the user on why they could not reach the destination that they wish to go to. There can be situations where a user had the application open already when they started travel, and the app did not take them to the destination. In such cases, the best thing to do is to test how the destination travel will work while the app is open and ensure that it has consistency with the app not yet opened. If there are game reasons why the user cannot leave their current location or it would be disruptive to do so, it is best to provide an appropriate message to the user telling them why they cannot travel to the new destination at this time. Now, let's look at some best practices to keep in mind when developing your multiplayer VR experiences. Incorporating platform multiplayer features in your multiplayer VR app can help reduce friction. Having consistency between the apps helps new players quickly understand how to group up and start playing together without needing to learn any custom system. Incorporating destinations and group presence first, followed by roster and invite, open up your VR multiplayer app to support a host of multiplayer platform features immediately making your app more approachable by your players. A best practice for integrating invites is for apps to have an easy to find invite button within the app to start the invite to app flow. Always look into enabling error dialogues and webhooks. They help in troubleshooting and make it easier to identify what went wrong and where to improve. Now, let's look at some of the takeaways and resources available for you to support your multiplayer VR development process. One of the best resources is the MetaQuest documentation on platform SDK multiplayer features. Learn about how multiplayer features of the SDK work, its various features and capabilities, and the APIs that are available for you to use. Here you will find all the SDK features we've discussed, the best ways to use them in your application, sample use cases, and examples to help you get started. Other useful resources are the video sessions from Connect 2021. The session, Building and Growing Multiplayer Apps for Quest, goes over platform SDK multiplayer features in detail. It also goes over how Echo VR incorporated these features in their game, as well as a detailed walkthrough of the shared spaces sample. If you're interested to learn more about how Ready at Dawn used Oculus platform multiplayer features in their game, Echo VR, Check out our blog post where we meet with Ready at Dawn project lead David Nupel to learn more about how these features impacted their community's growth. To learn more about the Shared Spaces sample, check out the Shared Spaces Multiplayer Showcase blog post, which discusses how to invite a friend to a match, edge cases, and API references. Another blog post, How You Can Quickly Bring People Together in VR, details the underlying technologies used to create the Shared Spaces application. So here we are, we went over a quick walkthrough of some more multiplayer features, learned about travel reliability, best practices when building your multiplayer VR apps, takeaways and resources that you can use when designing your own VR multiplayer applications. We hope this video was helpful to guide you when designing your multiplayer VR applications. If you prefer to consume information in a written format, we'll also be publishing a blog post that will go over all the things we discussed in this video. The supporting blog can be found on the Meta Open Source as well as the Oculus Developer blog channels, both of which are linked in the description box below. If you missed our previous videos, you can find them linked in the description below as well. To learn more about platform SDK multiplayer features in Quest, check out the documentation. 
We hope you enjoyed watching this video series and that it provided you with guidance and resources that you may need to get started with creating multiplayer VR applications. I would like to thank each one of you who have followed along with me throughout this video series. We can't wait to see what you all create. Thank you and see you next time.